It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day. And we're about to get started. First, introducing your co-host from Queens, New York, co-founder Neighborhood Tales, Trizzy the Guy, and your host, each and every night, from Detroit, Michigan. He does his thing. The face of the show. J.D. Jones. And our guest for tonight. Web3 educator. Influencer. Early pioneer. A leader. A voice of the community. I don't know her height. But how big she is in this space, I'm going to rank her at eight feet, seven inches tall. Yeah, no! On your cue, on your cue! Yo, what's the deal? Yo, this is your boy J.D. Jones. I'm one of your hosts here at Neighborhood. Boy, what's, up? what's up, Trizzy? Uh, what up, my bike? What's the deal over there, man? How you feeling tonight? Blessings, blessings, man. Happy to hear your voice, brother. Man, happy to be heard. Happy to be here, man, on episode 36 of Neighborhood Talk, man. I'm so elated. We want to welcome here all of our, our listeners and our, walk, our supporters around the world. But, you know, we're going to introduce ourselves until we can't introduce ourselves, until we don't need to be introduced our, no more. We are the newest and littest. Soon to be most web, soon to be most influential web three platform to ever exist. And you know what? Not only is this our space to talk about our newest and latest projects, such as Neighborhood Tales and everything that we have going on here with the Neighborhood Talk platform, but we, we share our space with the dopest guests. Hey, yo, Trizzy, man, I'm pretty sure that tonight happens to be no exception. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I want to uh, introduce somebody that I think is just going to bring a lot, a lot to the community, you know, a lot of knowledge, a lot of good energy. Um. Please, 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 won't you unmute yourself and introduce yourself, let everybody know your name and where you're from. Hey there, everybody. I am Yonda. Yonda. How y'all doing? Uh, I got to do the intro over. I got to do the whole intro over. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Go ahead. And I am Everything Metaverses. And JD, I'm from Toledo, Ohio. So salutations, everybody. Yeah, I'm in, Midwest, you know, yeah, in the building. Absolutely, and so it's a pleasure. Love, love to hear that. Love to hear that, Yonder. A pleasure, uh, you know, to have you here at Neighborhood Talk, man. I, I, I'm just so elated. You know, uh, shout out to Mo on the block. Uh, I heard that she had a lot to do with, uh, you know, this 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 platform this happening tonight. So, uh, I mean, let's hop right into it, Yonder. Let's let's talk about how you even learned about Web three. How you even got into it, if you will? Absolutely. So I was an executive. So my former life is an executive for a Fortune One company. So when I say a Fortune One company, that's the first company on a Fortune 100, Fortune 50, or Fortune 500 company. And so I um, have been using technology, Web3 technology, since probably 2003, 2004. I'm an OG at this, y'all. So if I look to the right, I have the, one of the very first iPads ever, right? So iPads came around in 2007. Yeah, so I'm sitting here <laughs> with this stuff. So technology has always been in my blood. So Web3, you know, I've been using tokens, again, since 2003. I've been using um, some of the blockchain technology to a degree um, based on my corporate career. 
And so um, I have been a coach, a mentor, and a business partner because as an OG, I have some value that I can add to projects, to individuals, to support you all. You know, when you look at founders, what you do is so incredible. When you're building a team, a high-performing team that's going to leverage, you know, you're not looking to make 100000 a year. You're looking to make millions, maybe even billions. This is, has a trillion market cap right now. So the sky's the limit. The only cap that you can put on yourself is the fact that you don't do, you don't move, and you don't believe, right? So right. when I come in here since March 2022, I've been on Twitter Spaces Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, building the Web3 and being a, a welcoming committee to those individuals who want to get into Web3. It was just me, y'all, talking to myself, talking to myself, recording so since March 22, I've been recording content by myself. And I was like, I'm going to build it. They're going to come. You build it, they're going to come. And then I looked up and here we are, 6,200 um, followers later and counting. Um, we are ranked within the Twitter spaces. Twitter is showing a lot of love. The community is showing a lot of love. So I'm so thankful for the community, the commitment, and being a social influencer in this space. That's fire, Yonder. That's that's fire, man. We need everyone to have that same kind of drive in this community to keep helping it grow. Um, but I wanted to know, like, when did you first first get into NFTs? So my first NFT. So I, um, if you look at my website, I actually have a um, a um, I, it's token gated. Right. So I created one of my collections there. So I've been using a token gate since um, last year. I made my official debut in January 1st, 2022 and said that I'm coming into the blockchain and I'm going to assist. Now, understanding working for a fortune company, you know, I've been certainly I've been able to tell you about some of the innovations, drone technologies, um, delivery, e-commerce, um, retail sectors, you name it, like. I can boil it down for you all to help you. So my NFT, yeah, January 1st, 2022. And again, I came as a coach, a mentor, and a partner. So not necessarily do I have a, a huge collection. So one of my business partners is uh, Keller Williams um, in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. So my business partner runs that country. And so it's been an honor to help build a metaverse, a marketplace, and a token. Great. That's awesome. Love that. Love that, Yonder. I mean, I don't even know if you know, you you already dropped so many gems tonight, you know, as far as, you know, your inf your influence. But I, I am thoroughly interested in, to know, you know, coming from your sector, what made you want to come into this, this industry, you know, this, what I like to call this fourth industrial revolution, a blockchain space and Web3 and AI, what made you want to come and say, hey, I'm going to simplify the blockchain industry for people? What what was your main main driver there? I'm a, you know, as an OG, I missed the dot com boom, you all. So I missed the whole emergence of the internet, right? <laughs> Believe it or not, right? So I'm not gonna miss this one. And so for me, it was like, man, I can I'm not a player anymore in this game. I am a coach. So I said, look. If people aren't used to having a coach, like part of being great as an executive is having leaders that support you, confidence that can support your thought process. So for me, I've always thought I was in the metaverse, right? Years ago, I'm like, hey, y'all ain't here either. So I recognized that I had maybe the ability to think on a higher level and to be able to really visualize some other things for the future. And so I've just been sitting here just kind of helping people to navigate um, the difficulties. I'm a non-techie tech. So simplifying technology helps people to onboard into Web3, under onboard into NFTs and understanding this new class, because some people don't see this as a new asset class. Like when I think of assets, I think of things like gold. I think of things like commodities. NFTs are an asset. Yeah. I mean, do do you think that's what the space is missing? I mean, right, we're we're so early in in the, in this industry, right? We're so early. And I guess my follow-up question to, you know, what I asked you was 
about what made you want to simplify it because I I personally think this this is what the space needs more people who can simplify and talk down talk the language of of of, of, of the average person right um, I work in tech myself during the day and if I go and I talk to people in in the tech language to to average people they they you know they're looking like I'm stupid so I mean. Do you think that's what this space is missing? That they that we need more people like yourself, mentors and coaches. I absolutely do. And then you have to know your customer. So that's a critical piece: is who is your customer? Because sometimes you look at your your roadmap and you look at your target audience, and then you have to measure it against your analytics, right, to see if that's if you you're truly hitting the mark as to who your target audience is. And if you aren't, then where do you need to pivot and adjust accordingly to hit those marks? Because success has to be intentionally planned, right? It doesn't accidentally happen, right? Oh, all of a sudden I wake up and I'm successful, right? No. So simplifying it so that, and I'm the water down queen of technology, right? So my superpowers have been to be able to meet people where they are and say, don't worry, you don't have to know anything. I created these digital agents to kind of help investors come into the metaverse, Web3, so that they don't have to do this alone. But in addition, I'm going to make this so simple. Like literally, you're going to be able to do this. And believe it or not, this has this strategy of watering down has become a part of the larger strategy of the digital transformation. So now that they understand, literally, I I start talking or I might start streaming to multiple platforms at once. And all of a sudden, you'll see courses, people writing courses, and they're popping up, whether it's on <laughs> LinkedIn, whether it's on, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, they have a course right. called speaking tech in plain language really y'all just gonna take my whole tagline y'all just gonna create the dang old <laughs> course are you really okay that sounds good so that type of influence where you have a platform like linkedin that's creating content while you're live streaming your stuff that's amazing right right and, and i think that you know it is a good time for people to help grow and learn and get ownership in this field and I think it is with the education of what actually the field is about, because I think a lot of people get interested in it. And when that tech talk starts to happen, they lo- you, you lose them because they don't understand what's going on. So this is just great, you know, that you have this platform where, you know, people can learn about this and, and take the opportunity to grow and help continue to build the community as well. So I just applaud you for that. Thank you, King. I appreciate that. Because, you know, when I look at it and and we're intentional about it. So, hey there, Jesus. Thanks for coming and supporting. I appreciate that, my friend. That's Project 1010, right? And so is what we look at is Mondays, we talking about jobs. So it's like, y'all, I have this whole torch to say, y'all got to reskill yourselves. You got to reskill yourselves because I worked for a company where like we had self checkouts and we had those things and there's intellectual property and we were solving an issue. And that issue for self checkouts was you can have the customer experience through a retail shopping and you can lose it at the point of sale where they're checking out because you don't have enough cashiers, you don't have enough. So you have to understand where what your target is so now all of a sudden you have all these stealth checkouts right so but it took a while to train the people took a while to train the people that if you want quick checkout then you're going to have to scan yourself so now that is rapidly catching on and other grocers and and retailers are starting to do those things now we're going to get you to shop for yourself and we're going to actually have you be the cashiers. So now you can scan as you go, right? So you scan it as you go and you're going through there and I'm like, what? So that is all that innovation. I'm talking about stuff I did in 2004, 2005, right? So when you think through this water down piece and helping people to really get into their swim lanes, like that's what I love the most is coaching and watering it down. And it's a part of the digital transformation. Yo, so when you go ahead. <laughs> Huh? You you dropping all the gems today. I'm sorry, I cut you off. You dropping. You, you, no, go ahead. Yeah. You, you gotta be so excited. You gotta be so excited. All right, so look, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. All right, so you talked about the dot com bubble that you said you missed, right? I I feel like I missed that too. Personally, I feel like my parents missed it. Right, a lot of people did. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. All right, so now looking at. Web three, what Web two point where we're talking, you're talking about, 
you know, auto checkout and automation, how the internet played a big part in, in all everything, how we do life now, right? But if we, so I work in tech and about for every 1,000 employees, it's about two, two black or two brown, however you want to classify as. Um, in your opinion, like how do you, I, I feel like we missed that bubble too, personally. I don't, I don't see a lot of representation from my community in tech. How do we not miss this this portion? Or what what can we do? What what can I do? Let me just make it personal. What can I do? Uh, you know, to help bring in representation. I'm we we on the show with with Trizzy and Cheers. These are two founders. I know what they're doing, right? Creating platforms or creating games. But what can someone like myself do, or anyone else that might hear this this piece, do to to make sure we can become included and not excluded? So you can start a mentoring circle, a mentor three, a mentor five, and it's really know your audience. So like everybody in the audience, I'm sure you know by name that y'all talk on the telephone, you're able to, you built that relationship with the folks, right? And if you haven't, then you need to start and by creating that mentorship with your community. So find those individuals because that's building talent from the inside, right? Because as we continue to grow in Web3, there are going to be critical roles and positions that we're going to need inside of our companies. And what better way to to have a lag in or to have your staffing than pulling from your community? So begin with the end in mind, knowing you're going to continue to scale and you're going to need more bodies and be intentional about who you're selecting and tapping to grow with you. That's that's all facts. That's all facts. And and while we're on the the conversation and the topic of learning, educating, um, I, I did tune in earlier to hear um to hear one of your spaces earlier, and I see that you were talking about copywriting your NFTs and your music and the Web three and things like that. Could you uh touch on that a little bit, um? let us know about the copywriting of the NFTs and the music and the different digital art. Absolutely. So, you know, on Tuesdays I dedicated to musicians, copyright, digital millennial copyright act, fair use. And I just kind of go through that with you all from a self-help toolkit. I'm not an attorney and I'm not a CPA, so I'm not giving you financial or legal advice. What I'm more, more or less doing is helping you to, to, to understand what the landmines are, right? right? So when you start to look at copywriting, what are you going to copyright? Okay, so, you know, there's levels to that, right? And so at least put something in place so that somebody doesn't, come after your NFT, your your picture, um, and so you copyright it. In addition, if you trademark, then you go to the trademark office and you get that in. So these are all pieces that the legal system can assist you with. But what's most, and I talk about the Digital Millennial Copyright Act because that impacts everybody, and I don't even think they know that. So any work that content, work that content, that you've created and you have posts on these social media platforms and say, for instance, I love the music. I love the hype. I love the intro. Right. And you own all those rights. But again, if I try to put something in the background or anything like that, I'm going to get a takedown notice. Like, right. and, I, and I have takedown notices and I'm like, wait a minute, how did I do that? You y'all suggested to me platform suggested to me to add this music to my dang on content. I go, <laughs> I go ahead and add it eight months ago, and here you come back with a con. I'm like, oh no, you didn't. So now, so now as a content creator, because I've been fighting with these platforms, Facebook filing charges. I mean, you know, I want some appeal process and stuff like that, but. From a content creator and a musician, why can't we develop these relationships ahead of time? Don't don't come, don't bait me, and then I take the bait, and then you want to switch it up later? So right. I don't mind sharing with the artist, right? But you're going to take my whole thing down? So what if you got a million views, right? I get a million views off my content, and all of a sudden, here you come saying, well, you know that background music don't belong to you, so you're going to have to, there's a copyright. Doesn't mean we're going to take it down. Just means that if there's any monetary pay, right, because I get paid as a content creator, any pay, then you might have to share. Wait a yeah, minute. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So why can't we establish that early? So the Digital Millennial Copyright Act, I got videos out there with no voice, no sound. I'm just like, duh, 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 duh. so how much impact is that going to have? Right. So it's so important to understand when your content is challenged, what steps do you take in order to protect yourself? Jewels. Jewels. All the gems, Shonda. I mean, you, you make it you make it sound so simple. And I think it is really that simple, which is protecting yourself. I got family members and friends that are authors and, you know, artists and they're protecting themselves currently in this space where, where, where you know, web 2.0 and, you know, the internet, you know, they protect themselves, but how, how do you do that on, on the blockchain? I, I know we're still coming into how that's done. Right. But basically you're saying there is a space for people to protect themselves for those who don't know. Right. Absolutely. Because, you know, there's things such as the metadata, right? And so there's so much you have hey, to look at when you are copywriting, y'all. Like, and then when you go into copyright, you have to understand distribution rights and you need to make sure that, um, what is it, republishing rights. You have to understand these, there's levels to this, right? Mm. And you want to make sure that all of those levels can, so if you are copywritten or you allow somebody to do your work or you Use your work. What are the rules of engagement with your non fungible tokens? Yeah, you gotta cross your T's. That the absolutely, absolutely. Great conversation, guys. So, yes, I, I really, really love what you all are doing. Like, you're making impact into the community, so that's so important. And then, I like the way that you're doing like Unreal Engine. I'm not, I'm a non techie tech, right? But I speak tech. So, and, and I look at Unreal Engine and I saw Unreal Engine because my business partner is a real estate company. So I look at things like tokenization of physical assets, right? So right. now I'm starting to move into that position because I want to talk to y'all, like for your community members, do y'all have a vacation house that is in your, your project name? Do you have a neighborhood tales house somewhere? We do. We do. I'm going to let... um is come in and speak on that a little bit but we do have um we do have all those things in place we're not supposed to talk about that yet <laughs> oh i'm sorry okay I'm just, wait a minute okay <laughs> it's yonder, uh, it's yeah yonder. we got we got some things but we gotta yeah we can't talk about that just yet uh but yeah 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 we we got we gotta uh we got some dope things lined up it's just not a. Uh, I guess we gonna have to get on a three way call after this and discuss it. But yeah, yeah, I, we we can't drop that info just yet. All right. Well, I'm in the Dominican Republic, so like I said, my partner <laughs> runs that country, right? So I have access to land. So you know, if you need a 200 unit development, right, for your community, and y'all want to sell that out, or if you want to look at some Airbnbs, you'll need mm -hmm. a penthouse. I just I used to have a pen post. Uh, with my penthouse that I went in partnership with three ladies and literally I'm huge about generational wealth. And then I have a layaway plan, right? So allowing people to have a layaway. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm teaching this thing. So again, when you start to look at attaching an NFT project to a physical asset, oh my goodness. That's Come fantastic. on. Come on. I mean, I'm all about that. Right. So it, it's a big thing where, you know, it's called the, Fidgetal, where you have a phys physical asset, but it's, it's tied to the blockchain. A lot of that, you know, is to come. And I, I hadn't even thought about, like, your house, right? Like, <laughs> like that is to come, right? Yeah. It's fractionalization. Is to come. Yeah. Everything is to come. Everything. Um, Yeah, this is beautiful, man. I'm feeling inspired. Um. But I did want to ask you about um, about your take on the artificial intelligence. Oh, I've been using it. I'm, my entry came into AI. So who you asking? Like last year sometime? Um, I'm asking you. I, I know you asking me. Good. <laughs> so 
I came in using my 4K AI bots because my thought process is how are we going to advertise in the, in the metaverse? So I needed to understand where are my bots and bots are good. So I started programming my AI bots, 4K AI, and actually doing um, curriculum design. I started doing newsletters. I started going in, doing some lead gen and I'm the founder of digital agents and so digital estate agents because I felt like one of my number one rules is don't go into the metaverse alone. Because if you do, exactly. do you know what to do when you're in there? Most people don't. So we'll get in this. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's cool. I I gotta I gotta say I feel you, Trizzy, man. Like Yonder is dropping all the gems, man. She is bringing the energy. I'm hey, hey, I'm jeweled up right now. Yeah, big gems over here in Detroit. I'm <laughs> telling you, Yonda. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, but uh, what's Trophy Verse? Can you talk to us about that? Like, what? How did Trophy Verse come about? Um, I can. So, I when I started, I was an immersive coach. So I used to take people into different um, my investors into different metaverses, and have them walk around and become know comfortable so I was a personal concierge there okay. and so my um and I did business so I belong to um, I ran a syndicate so I ran a syndicate which is kind of like a real estate investment trust and so when I ran that syndicate I was already into buying real estate on a layaway plan so I kind of looked at some creative financing and went through that and so um, my business partner, I decided to buy. So we're in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. And so the beauty is I've never been approached you all to buy real estate from the dirt. Like I never had the chance to go and talk to the developer and see what he wants to build. And he was like, you want to buy in? Wait a minute. You're offering me at before time. Oh, heck yeah. So then I, Tropiverse. So Tropiverse is our digital metaverse. It's our digital ecosystem, and it's part of Keller Williams. So we're powered by Keller Williams, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. That's who Tropiverse is, is Keller Williams. Keller Williams is one of the largest real estate brokerages in the world, if not the largest real estate brokerage in the world. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. that is crazy. I mean, I see Keller Williams here all over Detroit. You know, and you know, you, you know how big they are, right? But to have them backing, you know, to, I mean, for them to already have their digital footprint in the blockchain, er, er, you know, industry, it's huge. It's just really, you know, shows where we're headed. And you know, I I can't speak enough about how early we are, but how influential we are. I mean, I did so much reading on this on this industry over the past week. You know, while I was I was traveling for work and, you know, just reading up on where we are and where we're headed, you know, platforms like Neighborhood Tales and, you know, mentors and coaches like you, Yonda, it's going to be so influential in the development, especially ushering, ushering in our youth. Can you talk to us about how important you think the youth will be in this in this industry? Yeah, it's going to be significant. You know, I started doing... Um, I started looking at my iPads and I went back to, this is pretty bad as a parent, but I was able, my kids had iPads ever since they came out. Right. And so they've been, and I looked at it and they were taking videos on the iPads. My daughter is, my youngest is, was two at the time and my oldest was six and they're just going in there. They caught, and then I have some of their first digital art. Um, their digital prints and stuff like that from like 2005, 2006. And so to see that in this time stamp, I'm like, wow, we were really ahead of time. But see, they're digital natives. Did I say they were two and they were six? So literally yeah. my 16-year-old, I mean, excuse me, my 17-year-old, she's been coding since probably 13. Um, my 14-year-old. Um, 13 year old has probably been graphic designing since she was six. So her avatars. And so part of it is I had them subscriptions to like Roblox to Minecraft and things like that, because I wanted, I don't, I'm not raising my children to work for anybody. I'm raising my children to be entrepreneur and I'm unapologetic about that. And so that is 
the future for the youth. So right now I'm talking to the parents. Do you know your kid can actually be carrying the household money right now? If we can get these kids over to these coding cats, so can I get them to teach them this drone academy? Mama and daddy, listen, you need to learn how to manage your kid right now because I'm trying to tell you they can take care of the bills. Do you know that your kid going to have to file taxes, parents, by the way? Hey, you ain't paying attention to what they doing, but they making money over here getting paid in cash app and stuff. So, and then helping the kids to understand we don't get that away for free, y'all. Okay, let's sit down. Little kids, we now need to talk about your business plan. They look at me like, business plan? I don't want no business plan. But guess what? Every Sunday, I sit down and I talk to my kids. And I'm either I'm shouting or I'm yelling. But you have to have family business. And you have to talk about their investments so that they can't be fooled and scammed. I'm not promised today, I mean tomorrow, but I can tell you my kids should be well-versed in the real estate game or it's going to be tough to get scammed by them jokers. And then just setting up the trust to make sure they're okay. The children are the future. And I feel like if we're building a metaverse without their impact or their influence or their opinion, we're doing the wrong thing. Couldn't have said it any better. I couldn't have said that any better, y'all. And I, I got small children myself. And, you know, what? I'm with you. It's so funny. Every Sunday, we have a we have an hour where we, you know, we put it on the screen and it's, it's family meeting time, and we talk about business, and we talk about aspirations, we talk about goals, and you know, we talk about things like the metaverse and how important their footprint will be. Um, you know, and I'm just excited to see what they do for this industry, uh, just like you know our ancestors when they when the steam industry was coming about with mass production and you know that that first revolution and things like that when car plants were, you know, changing the game, things like that, they, they'll be uh, trendsetters and how this, this plays out as well. But, uh, you know, I, I want to kind of maybe wrap up with this question. And then before we move on to the next portion of our, our, our show here, Yon is, you know, can you talk to us about what kind of sacrifices or challenges that you may have faced building in this community and how you ha- had to overcome yeah, so I had to bootstrap, right? So I didn't have any funding or access to funding, and that was a choice for me. And again, I saw it pretty simple, the industry. I just wanted to coach, mentor, and um, be a business partner for folks that needed the support. So my team has human resources. My team has um fashion so they create those brands so i thought that was so important but the sacrifice was being consistent consistency has a starting point and the days that i'm not feeling well the days that i was tired the days that the kids i I still had to show up because i had people dependent on me so i thought so you know it was one of those things and at the same time i'm building generational wealth so i have to extract money out of the house and i have to live very humbly in order to build the future and the dreams for my children this is their company right i'm just a placeholder until they're ready to to walk into their destiny because they already do it so it's just been truly for me sacrificing consistency, sacrificing bootstrapping because I didn't take any funding and that was tough, right? But again, it's part of success. You have to be intentional. So when you get there, it's just like, wow, we did this because I didn't do it by myself. It's truly the community that helped it happen. And that's what you have to stay top of mind is community is everything. All right. Noted. Noted. Thank you for that. Um, but you know explanation of what it looks like to sacrifice and, and build not just in web three but in, in everyday life and to, what we do every day matters so much um you know you, you know jd i heard this quote the other day yeah and it said um discipline determines your destiny not your desire and i just Ooh. that was like serious and it kind of kind of feeds off of what Yonder was talking about, you know, about your destiny and just the consistency and, and making it happen, you know what I'm saying? And it's even better when you do it together. So, you know, that's that's just beautiful, man. That is beautiful, man. It's super dope. You talk about, I'm a, I wrote that one down too, just so you know, Trizzy. Yeah, your discipline determines your destiny, man. And yeah, man, that's 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 deep, man. I appreciate that, man. So uh, we're going to move over to the next segment of our show, Yonder, and it's called Capper Fat. Essentially, we ask you a series of questions. And 
Web3 base and you get the chance to say Capra fact and then you just tell us why you think it's Capra fact. And so uh, hopefully that I explained that simple enough for you. You say uh, Capra fact? Capra fact. Yes, man. Okay. All right, bet. So the first Capra fact question for you is the NFT space has a bad reputation, Capra fact. Cap. Okay. All right. Tell us why it doesn't. Because it's it's not understood. And okay. so sometimes when people don't understand, they just walk away. And so once you understand, then you're you're all in. You're like, oh man, I gotta create this collection. You're planning parties around it. Yeah, love that, love that, love that. Cool. And so the uh the next cap effect we're gonna do is uh, indie gaming studios have more opportunity in Web3 than big studios. Fact. Talk about it. And the fact is that you know, we're finding ourselves in the decentralization portion. So when you start to look at how influencers are being categorized, so you can have an organic influence, you can have a mini influence. So in Web3, it's really about people trying to get to you. So now there's value in having a community of 100 folks and that's it. Where before they're like, you need to have a million followers, you need to have 20,000 retweets. and No. No, so fact is the little guy is easier to work with. They're nimble, and the big guy is gonna struggle to keep up. Like the, the little guys are on top of all the cutting edge and trends, even though the big guy got the money. But they need the little guy to continue to innovate. Love that, love that. All right, um, I guess the, the next chapter fact for you, question for you, Yonda, is uh, you know, all future art, all future art will be on a blockchain, would you say that's cap or fat? I would say that's fact. All right. So no no more like none of that old physical art you think will ever, you know, be useful in, in the coming days? So it's it's going to be there, but you're going to have digital replicas of the physical, right? And you're in more because when I see art and I took art appreciation and, and um, when I was a, a kid, art holds its value pretty well and its wealth pretty well. So you're going to have the physical um, assets, but there's also going to be an emergence. You're going to have more digital assets in art than you are in the physical. That's my opinion. Okay. Love that. Thank you. Fact. We got about two more. We got two more for you. Two, two more cap of fact. So the next one is going to be the blockchain will help people improve users' income. Oh my gosh, yeah, because I, I didn't see the open sign, excuse me, I didn't see the close sign on the blockchain. <laughs> the blockchain is 24-7, 365. <laughs> so a part of the whole digital transformation and helping people to understand something like ISO 222, you know, that's the compliance standard for how money is going to be processed. So that's the global standardization, right? The XML conversation, that language and stuff like that. So understanding, you're going to have to have people People there. I'm telling like wallets. I've been wearing MetaMask out. I'm like, listen, y'all need to hire me to consult with y'all. I got some stuff for y'all because here's these screenshots here. Wait a minute, Facebook, you need some of this too for your customer service because I need to help. Like, I don't know if y'all looking at your net promoter score, but Facebook, y'all suffered. Y'all wasn't paying me right. My last check was 80 cents. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> y'all yeah, rolling over here. All right, uh, I think we got the the last cap of fact question for you. I I personally want to ask with this one. All right, so because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about this. So maybe you can enlighten me on your 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 thought. But the full potential of blockchain, it won't happen in our lifetime. Cap or fact? Fact. Okay. All right. And the reason being is because they just added blockchain to like the um. 
into the whole digital transformation. They've now really saw blockchain technology, even though, you know, it's kind of an older technology, but you all have made it so, the devs have made it so much simpler. So when I look at GitHub, right, I'm a non-techie tech, I don't read code, but when I'm looking in there, I'm like proof of space, proof of word, proof of I, uh, uh, things, proof of, there's all these proofing, right? So when is the proofing going to stop? And all these blockchains are built. And then we got the AI that's a part of some of these blockchains. And then I'm like, well, who's controlling the AI? I need that company right there. Then I found that company that's controlling the AI and the server and the cloud. So I'm like, okay, so let me talk to y'all about. So, no, we got a ways to go. <laughs> you better Words. Um, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. So, um, y'all, do you have any final words for our listeners um, where you could be reached at or anything you want to let anybody know? Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever had a coach, but it changed my life. And so I'm, I'm codependent <laughs> on coaches and mentors and business partners. And the reason being is because it's almost like having a therapist, except it's for your business. It's for your business mind. And sometimes you don't want to talk to your partners. Sometimes you don't even want to talk with your constituents. You want to talk to somebody that's non-judgmental, non-biased, that is your person that will help you plan out things like I used to use my coaches. So every every corporate job that I've taken, I've had a coach. So that's part of my package. You know, you have to have me a coach and I need to meet with my coach and we decide I meet with them once a week. And then we kind of week for a couple hours. If I need to meet with them twice a week, then I get that. I need them to come on site with me. I need them to understand me. I'm serious, y'all. Like and I, w- I was a one percent in a fortune 500 company like i literally the sky's the limit because i'm able to separate and shut off the noise and have my coach there to say okay i want to make this announcement with and remember i'm an african-american female i don't know if y'all know that right i'm an african-american female and i have a lot of times Mm -hmm. i've been the only african-american female in rooms And so, and that's in rooms of executive leaders where I'm talking to the presidents of the company and where, and I I may work for the company or something like that. So it's been very important for me to understand who I'm leading, but also how to deliver because I have 97% directness in me. Right. And that's just because, you know, it's, it's tough as a woman sometime managing men. Okay. It's tough. And so- And I try to actually use it as a more collaborative partnership space for us. But sometimes I'm the velvet hammer and I'm okay with that. And so when you're leading these teams and you're leading the diversity and you're leading, just know that your coach is there to say, okay, well, why don't you try to say it this way? And how does that sound? And so, or what do you think about this? And what does this roadmap and trajectory look like? And it's somebody that holds you accountable. You're going to deliver what you say you're going to deliver. Right. Right. That's what I would say. So if you're interested in coaching, if you're interested, you have questions, you want to do more, then I do 15-minute sessions. So feel free to take on a free consult, see how a coach is, and then decide if you want to move forward with some additional coaching. And my website is everythingmetaverses.com. And it is a Web3 website. So I've been messing around with this thing since last year, probably April. And I'm happy with it. Like, you know, token gating, the new memberships. I worked with Stripe back in September to say, okay, y'all going to be accepting crypto and all these other payments in China. Okay, how does the payment system, the rail system work? And I get in there. I'm a new magnet. So anything I can do to support you all, don't hesitate to call on me. Love that, love that, love that. Yonda, what an absolute pleasure it was to have you on episode 36. My girl Yonda, taking the mystery out of blockchain and simplifying it for all of us. We want to thank you for joining us here on our platform at Neighborhood Talk. What an absolute pleasure it was to have you talk everything Web3, its potential, and all that is to come. We really appreciate you. But y'all know how we get down here at Neighborhood Talk. We are right back at it this Thursday. We got the gang J Cluster coming to talk to us about everything web three super excited you don't want to, you don't want to miss that episode 8 p.m eastern, eastern standard time jay cluster is coming in the building and right after that show our discord it gets real lit y'all i don't know about how i don't know about anybody else's discord 
but we, we actually have movie nights in our Discord. We're watching we're watching one of our favorites. I ain't going to tell y'all. Come Thursday and find out what it is. What uh, is we it? Have it a blast. <laughs> what is it? No, no. It, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, man. They got to come and they got to listen to us on Thursday to get the drop, man. Uh, no, but I'm excited to have movie night. I mean, that's how fun our environment is. That's the culture. That's the platform that we have. Fun environment and inclusive. All you need to do to be a part of our platform Go to our neighborhood tells page, NH Tales, on Twitter. Click the link in our bio. Be a part of our Discord. We're giving away a hundred thousand dollars in cash prizes. I'm talking about real money. Uh, you know, our founders they don't play, man. So we're giving out real money, real prizes, real drops, real assets, use that are functional and have have uh you know use. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Trizzy, the God, man, always a pleasure to share the platform with you. Whenever we get a chance to link, uh, y'all can find me, your boy. Uh, at official JD Jones everywhere, eat everywhere. I'm everywhere at official JD Jones. Uh, and Yonder again, what a pleasure it was to have you and, and, and host with you. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, definitely, we enjoyed everyone came out and listened. It was a true jewel. I told you I'm icy right now after Yonder's given all these jewels. So I definitely appreciate that. Make sure you follow us, Neighborhood Tales. Follow me, Trizzy the God. Follow. Yo, cheers. Shout out to Big Moke on the Blidock. Um, Cheers, you got anything? You got anything before we get up out of here? Yeah, everybody, uh, screenshot this. Jump in the official Discord. Post the screenshot. And we got something for you. We got a giveaway for you. Something from the ecosystem that can be utilized in Liberty Isle District 1. Being built in Unreal Engine 5 as we speak over a year in development and we vow to give you one of the best gaming experiences to date not just the web 3 game we're mm -mm. talking about a game Talk all right about. to compete with all markets okay mm -hmm. so yeah look out for that yonder we appreciate you we love yes. you we yes. support you yes we got your back we live yes. you high and neighborhood tales give me my music and my horns it's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day.